Yo, how's it going guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm gonna to talk about 10 reasons why bands need a tour manager. And this is for bands, but it's also for DJs. It's for any kind of artist that needs management on the road. So for those that don't know, I am a full-time tour manager. I just finished up a two month run through the US in a bandwagon. We did Europe, we did Honduras, we did Belize. We were kind of all over the place. And I've tour managed for reggae bands, for electronic DJs, for metal bands. If you wanna learn more about me and my experience, I do have TikTok, Twitter, uh, Instagram, where I post all about my journeys on the road. I also have a travel vlog where I share all the little nuances and adventures of tour life called No Way Home, and I'll have a link to that in the description below. 10 reasons why bands, music artists need a tour manager. I'm gonna go through each one, and at the end, I'm gonna share my number one personal tip for all TMs that has been what I would say has blessed me with the opportunities that I've gotten because of this one tip. And I will say I am always open for hire. So if you are a band or you're an agency or management looking for tour management support, I do have information in my link tree where you can schedule a call with me. Or if you just have questions about tour life, please put them in the comments below, or you can also schedule a call. I would love to chat and share my experience and help you achieve the success you can on the road. And lastly, this list is in no particular order. These are just 10 things that came to mind when I thought about doing this video. But if you have other questions or other suggestions, and maybe I missed something super obvious, please put it in the comments below. I would love to address it and I would love to answer any questions you have. So reason number one, why bands need a tour manager with them is accurate budgeting and forecasting before and after the tour. See, my job as a tour manager is to come into a new band or a new group uh, dynamic and design the tour with them. Meaning I sit down with management, I sit down with finance, and we talk about the entire budget forecast. How much do we plan to spend on all of the hotels? How much do we plan to spend on, on all of the airfare? What about all the additional production or support fees or transportation ground fees where it's not included in the deal? It takes a good tour manager who's been on the road to know where these average costs are in the market as well as where you can save costs. So for example, if you're a new band, how do you know if you need to get a bandwagon versus a sprinter van with a trailer? Do you know where all the clearance points are on all the major highways to where you can't go above a certain height of a truck? That could be a huge issue if you don't think about it in advance. And it absolutely affects your budgeting because different types of vehicles cost different amounts of money. So as a TM, I sit down with the band's management, with the agent sometimes if we need to, and we talk about all of these costs before the tour even begins, oftentimes months in advance, so we can get ahead of everything and know exactly where we hope to end up. And then at the end of the tour, once we're all wrapped, we all sit down together again, look at the actuals, and hopefully we've been, come very close to that forecasted goal. And I will say with me, it has always been under. So here's a personal tip I have as a TM from my experience for accurate budgeting and forecasting, and that is always put a 5% contingency on the profit margins at the end of your tour and put it in when you begin. That way you're always working with a 5% deficit so that in the worst case scenario, if you come really close to your target budget or maybe you're just over, you have that 5% as a buffer. It's just a little safety mechanism and it makes the artist and management feel like they're actually saving a bit more money. Reason number two, advancing. Now, if you have any experience with the touring or even production uh, world, you know everything about advancing. Advancing is critical. For those that don't know, advancing is the process where I, the TM, coordinate with the venue or with the promoter all of the logistics for the show. Meaning we get on email threads, oftentimes they're up to a hundred emails long. And we chat through all of the logistics of the show from the technical aspects. Do they have all the backline we need? Do they have all of the, do they have the risers? Do they have the SFX? Do they have technicians? We talk about hospitality. Are they able to provide everything for us that we need there? We talk about ground transportation. Is it included in the deal? Are they gonna offer it to us? What kind of vehicles will they give us? What about hotels? Do they have preferred pricing? Are we on, their, on our own? Are we staying nearby or far away? All of these pieces come together in the advancing portion of what a TM does. And oftentimes advancing will begin weeks, if not months before the actual show. That way we can come into the show all on the same page with what's gonna happen. And it's a lot of communication. And I would say, you know, as a TM, that is almost the bulk of what my work is. So my tip as a TM when it comes to advancing is to create an advancing template 
before you even initiate your contact with promoters or with venues. And what I mean by that is understand all of the questions that you need to ask of a promoter in a venue before you reach out to them. Compile that list into a very concise email, like a body, like a template. And that way you can copy and paste that for each advanced thread that you're starting. And that way every single show is gonna have all the answers, hopefully if they give them to you, that you need for that show. Reason number three why bands need a tour manager with them on the road is day schedules for artists and for the crew. As you can imagine being on the road for three months straight or two months straight, however long the tour is, Every day something new has to happen, but every day certain things have to happen, like you have to meet the sound check times, you have to get the load in coordinated, you have to do the meet and greets, the VIP packages, you have to schedule all the changeovers, you have to schedule every single support set time. All that stuff has to be figured out before the actual day. You can't figure it out in the moment, right? Because you, you'll never be able to succeed that way. So my job as a TM is to create schedules, day sheets for everybody in the, in the, in the touring party, including the artists, including the crew, myself, and any third party um, staff that we hire, like media folks or maybe a merch seller or something like that. Most commonly, what is considered industry standard is Master Tour. It's a software where a TM such as myself can input all the logistics for a show, the run of show, the schedules, all the times that we're going to airports, to the venues, etc. And the artists and crew can access it from their mobile devices. It's, it's the most common um, industry standard platform for touring. And as a TM, it's my job to create that sheet for the band, for management, for all the crew, for everyone to see so everyone's on the same page with when and where certain things have to happen throughout the day. So my tip when it comes to creating these uh, day sheets is to make sure that you not only share the day sheets and master tour with your crew and artists, but you also share it with your promoter and with management where applicable because it helps to have everybody on the same page. And if the promoter can know what time everyone's landing, for example, they can then figure out, oh, we can actually give you transport because we have a runner available at that hour. Or they understand that we're gonna come for sound check at this time, they're gonna make sure all their staff are there. Reason number four why bands need a tour manager with them is coordinating VIP packages and meet and greets. I've been with a handful of bands and artists who have some variety of a VIP package or some sort of um, meet and greet package offered to like a fan club, or maybe they even purchased this package. And so there are certain expectations on the day of show that these people are expecting. For example, if your band sells a, a merch package included with a VIP kind of like ticket upgrade sort of thing, when those guests get there, they're expecting to get their goodie bag with the shirt, with the CD, whatever you're offering. They're expecting to be there for that meet and greet on time they're expecting to get the signatures that they want they're expecting to get the signed poster and as a tm it's my job to make sure that all of those things happen on the road so typically what will happen is management will send me like a list of who these vip or meet and greet purchasers are and then it's my job to communicate with them so i either text them or email them all collectively a day before the show and give them all the details with where they need to be what time they need to be there what they should bring what they shouldn't bring kind of the expectations of how the run of show or the run of the meet and greet will go and then of course day of show actually executing it and that's actually a lot of work especially when you're talking about being there with the band during the meet and greet ushering people through a line like oh take your photo and go on next person next person somebody has to do that in some cases the venues help but most venues will charge additional fees for the additional staff or hours to do that sort of thing so as a tm it's typically my job to make sure that that is all um, overseen and handled correctly and if, if you think about it it's a big deal you know, meet and greets and VIP packages are not only a huge financial benefit to the band, but it's a great way for the band to connect with their fans in more unique ways than just the show. And it's very important that those experiences go well. If they don't go well, that could mean a lost fan, that could mean some sort of reputational damage on social media, you never know what could happen. So my tip for coordinating VIP packages and meet and greets is making sure that there is a run of show and a day sheet for the meet and greet folks like actually over communicating the exact times locations and expectations for those people you could just text them and say oh be here at this time and we'll figure it out but that doesn't answer their questions of like what should they bring what should they expect like should they bring a marker to get a signature or should they bring a camera to get a photo over communicating these sorts of things will set the vip and the meet and greet up for success and it will reflect 
more positively on the band. Reason number five why bands need a tour manager with them is road finances. So we talked about the budgeting before and after the show where we figure out how much we wanna spend on everything. But sometimes when you're on the road, things change. Like if an instrument breaks and you suddenly have to buy a replacement, or maybe the band decides that they wanna do a huge day at, I don't know, Disneyland or something just to kind of have some fun, right? That's technically gonna be a tour expense. And so as a TM, it's my job to track every single expense on the road and put it into our budget and track every single receipt so that at the end of the tour, we can reconcile every single credit card statement and know exactly what we spent spent and why we spent it. It even comes down to things like receipts for gas. Like when I have a driver, I have to collect the receipts from the bus driver every single night and put that into my system so that I know exactly how we're trending on our gas target. Like if we're spending an extra hundred bucks every single time, I have to look into that. Like why are we, are we forecasting to be above our budgeted forecasted amount for gas spend? And if so, why and what can we do to fix it? So my tip for tracking finances on the road as a tour manager is to keep some sort of a waterproof bag for all the physical receipts, because you do want to keep those because you can't trust the credit card transactions on their own and input them on a nightly basis or as often as you can so that you can track them relevant to each show. Like you need to know which city or which show caused this fee to go up. Like for example, we did a show with a band um, in Minnesota and uh, we left the keyboard out in the sun for too long. It was just an accidental thing. The keyboard got fried, so we had to buy a new one. So that cost, that expense needs to be put on the itemized item list for that particular date so that we can reconcile that at the end of the tour and know why it was more expensive. Reason number six why bands need a tour manager. This is kind of a funny one, and that is team drama. Yes, you heard me right, drama on the road. You gotta think about it, when you're on a bus or traveling with 10 to 15 people and everyone sees each other every single day, it's almost impossible to avoid some sort of conflict. It could be something small, it could be something huge, but something's gonna happen, someone's gonna get pissed off, someone's gonna get offended, and as a TM, it sort of becomes my job to make sure that the tour is operating successfully and that means being sort of like that therapist in a way to help um, ease people's concerns or solve conflict or whatever I need to do. I'll give you an example. There was a tour some time ago uh, where one of the band members had a girlfriend and somebody else in the band didn't like her. And so like, for whatever personal reasons, and there was this conflict internally of, uh, well, the boyfriend wants her backstage, but the guy, maybe someone else didn't want her there. And so how do we tr you know, traverse that, right? If we don't talk about it and figure it out, there's all kinds of spite, there's all kinds of hatred, anger, and it could actually damage the performance and perhaps even damage the reputation of the band. So my tip for dealing with drama as a tour manager is, and I feel like a therapist for saying this, it's to over communicate everything. Always talk everything through, even if it feels uncomfortable, if it feels unnecessary, it needs to be said, it needs to be vocalized so somebody can hear it, and so that it puts it into other people's minds that this is something that might not be a huge problem, but it could escalate into one. Because if there's one thing I've, I've learned from, from being on the road with bands is that everything will always come to light in some way, shape or form. If not directly, it'll turn into something else and then we have to dig down to the root of the problem. It gets messy. I don't like doing it, but it's required for, of, of a TM. And that's another reason why a band needs somebody like that uh, to be on the road with them, to help them traverse through these dilemmas. Reason number seven why bands need a tour manager with them on the road is settlements. So we talked about the budgeting before and after the show. We talked about tracking expenses on the road. A settlement is where I sit down with the promoter or the venue owner at the end of the show and we go over all of the costs for the show, everything that we spent from marketing to labor to any kind of SFX or production backline that they covered, etc. And we reconcile the entire profit loss statement for the show and we ensure that the band, my job is to make sure that the band gets the money that they're promised and that they've earned. And so some of the things that may change from like the original offer to what we actually settle with is like bonus structures. So if we hit a certain ticket goal, we should be getting a certain kind of bonus, right? It's typically gonna be written in the deal. We're aware of it, but I have to be there to make sure the promoter doesn't skimp us out on it. Or for, you know, they might forget, right? Assume positive intent. 
So my job is to sit down with that person at the end of each show and go through every single line item and make sure that every single spend makes sense, that we're on the same page about it, and that they send that wire or they give me that check or they give me that cash, whatever it is, for the band. I'll give you an example. I've done so many shows where we'll sit, I'll sit down with the, um, the promoter at, at the end of the night and we look through the costs and there's like this huge increase in labor costs, right? And so I then have to go to that promoter there and say, okay, why do we spend $15,000 on labor when we had 10,000 budgeted? Like, why did we go so much over? And then it becomes a conversation, right? Did they actually need to spend that? I've been in situations where it totally made sense. They had to do it because there was a huge cleanup fee that was uh, we were aware of in the deal. It didn't make it into the settlement, so they had to reconcile it with additional labor. But I've also done shows where it was just a typo, or maybe they try to take advantage of us. You know, I don't know what the situation is. But as a TM, it's my job to make sure that we're all on the same page with how the show is settled and that the band gets the money that they're promised and that they've earned. I actually have a pretty um, comprehensive deep dive into a settlement uh, on my channel, which I'll either link in the video or in the description below. If you wanna check it out, it's very nitty gritty. We go through each individual line item of a settlement I did in Seattle, I believe. And now here's my tip as a TM for settlements, and that is to create a pre-settlement before you even go to the show. So before you even get to the venue, before you even have the performance, create a pre-settlement, meaning you should get some sort of document from the promoter saying these are what their projected costs are and this is what their budgets are, and you should have a paper trail of every communication with them and create a pre-settlement that you can say, okay, at the end of the night, this is where we should be, right? If all things go well, or maybe regardless of the bonus structures, whatever, we can tap, tack that on later, but this is where all the costs should be. And that way, if you share that with the promoter before the show, they know you're watching out for it, and they know that that is where you are expecting things to be. And that can kind of help um, clear up the air about any discrepancies and like what they think it should end up being. And then it actually makes you look pretty, pretty professional at the end of the night when you go to them and say, well, here's what we had discussed on, on email. And we figured that, that this was going to be the cost. So why is it over? Kind of puts them in the hot seat and then they have to explain themselves. Reason number eight, why you need a tour manager on the road with you as a band or creative member, whatever, um, is merch. Merch is fundamental to basically every type of performing act. And I'm talking, you know, as a TM, the entire realm of managing the merch um, cycle, everything from organizing, coordinating the, the, the shipments and deliveries, doing all the countins. Now in some cities, we may hire a merch seller. Some tours, we may have a merch seller on the road with us and they can help offload some of those um, sort of my, uh, minute, what's the word? Some of those smaller tasks, but as a TM, it's my responsibility to oversee the success of the merch program. And I will tell you right now, I mean, I've been with bands where they make three times as much money in merch as they do for their guarantee for the show. So merch is actually a very important piece for bands and artists on the road. So my tip as a TM overseeing the merch component of a tour is I, I think it's a great idea to always have your own Square account and your own Square reader. Um, in some cases, the venues will have them or the seller you hire will provide them. That is doable, but it's a lot easier logistically, especially if you have a lot of shows back to back to have your own because you can have all the SKUs, all the prices, all the items pre-programmed in your own Square account. You're responsible for charging whatever device you have, if it's like an iPad or a phone or whatever. It's your Square reader. You get it back at the end of the night. You feel confident that you can wrap the seller, pay them their fees, and then just go through the itemize and see exactly what was sold. It's already going into your account. It's a huge, huge time saver and management likes it because typically the Square accounts will be like either the artists or management so they can see in real time when those um, when that revenue is, is generated. Versus like if you use a promoter Square account, they have to then show you proof like a couple of days later of, of the amount uh, that was sold. They have to wire you the funds. And if you have like 10 shows in a row, it gets very tedious trying to go through each one and gather that information. Reason number nine, nine, that's nine, right? Why uh, artists need a tour manager on the road. And this is actually mostly for management, but a tour manager is the eyes and ears on the road for management with the band because the management can't go on tour. They're busy, they have other clients, they're in their offices, whatever. They are, they're not the ones literally out there on the road. And the band will only communicate certain things with management. They have a very, you know, usually some kind of cordial professional relationship. It's my job as a tour manager to make sure that I'm relaying to management 
understand what is happening on the road. I, every management wants to hear this stuff because they care about their artists. They want to make sure that the shows are going well. They want to hear how the fans are reacting. They want to hear like maybe which songs are getting good um, or being received well by the by the crowd because that could indicate maybe they need to put more marketing into that avenue or that song from the band, right? It's all of these little, little micro pieces about the show that as a TM, it's my responsibility to articulate to management. Another great example is like, does a venue suck? I mean, I've been on the road with some bands and you know, they'll manage management when, and the agents will send us to a venue or a promoter we've never worked with before and we just have an absolutely awful time. I will tell man, man, management right after that 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 was a terrible show, the band hated it, I hated it, the promoter was an asshole, whatever happened, you know, and that could be, that's it, maybe we'll never come back. But they never would have gotten that feedback, at least not to the level that a TM will relay it if the TM wasn't there at all, right? The, the band may say, oh, you know, it was whatever, but that isn't enough information for management to make a good decision. So my tip for communicating with management as a TM is at the end of every single show, I send management a recap email with all the highlights and points of concern from the night, every little thing from how the band um, works together to how the fans are, to how the promoter was, to how the venue was, to every single just minute detail, I will let management know. And I'll tell you right now, as a TM, management loves this. So if you're trying to become a TM, do this because it's 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 the it's one of the most truest ways that I've seen to get on management's good side. And it just makes sense, right? You want to tell them what's happening so that they're in the know so they can take care of their artists better. And it instills trust from you as a TM. Okay, and finally, the 10th reason why bands and artists need a TM on the road, and this is my secret tip, so thank you for staying to the very end. This is a tip that is sort of unconventional, but I have found it to be extremely useful and beneficial to my career, and that is TMs are supposed to be a jack of all trades, which means that we jump in and do anything that needs to get done if it's not being done. So if we don't have a merch seller because they bailed last minute, a TM will become a merch seller. If we don't have a guitar technician because the guitar tech, you know, bailed on the tour or whatever, we'll become a guitar tech. We may have to learn how to do it, but our jobs are to be there to oversee the whole success of the tour. And it's nice having somebody like that on the tour because it helps the band feel relieved that everything's being done correctly. It helps management feel, you know, um, good that the tour is, is operating successfully and it's a great way to get experience as well as a TM doing a ton of different roles. I've been in so many cities with bands where I have to jump in and do just the most random things because people don't show up, things fall through, you know, random things happen. So I would say never white glove yourself, right? Never say, oh, I can't do that. It's not for me. It is for you and it's your job as a TM to oversee the, the entire um, operational success of the tour. And if you do it right, it could lead to a lot more work in the future. I've had some tours where I picked up some very critical um, front of house audio uh, instrument related work, which has led to other touring opportunities because of that experience that I've earned as a TM jumping in to fill in someone else's shoes. Well, that's it guys. 10 reasons why, what's the title? 10 reasons why bands need a tour manager on the road with them. Um, I know it was a long list. Thanks for sitting through it all with me. If I missed something, please let me know in the comments. I would love to either address it or respond or give you my feedback. And if you have any questions about, you know, the TM world, or if you're a band, then you have questions about what it's like being on the road or getting a tour manager, whatever you have, put it in the comments. I would love to chat with you guys and, and help you out on your journeys. Again, I do TM freelance and full-time, so I am always open to chatting with new clients about going on the road. Um, you can either message me directly or I have a, um, you can set up a phone call with me, consultation call via my link tree, which should be in my profile, which is wherever, somewhere here, I guess. Um, also follow me on socials, all of my social media, YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram is at Alexi Wayman. I post all kinds of um, tour related content videos. And sometimes I even hire for tour for touring positions through my social media. And of course, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, comment, d do the works. You know how this goes. I don't, I'm still trying to grow this channel. So you guys know what to do and leave some comments with your questions. I'd love to chat with you guys. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you found this video helpful and I will see you guys next time.